Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Naresh Mago and with me is Renuka RS with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lays foundation stone of new parliament building in New Delhi. Says the new building will be the place to fulfill aspirations of India in 21st century. National interest is supreme. Different views and different perspectives empower a vibrant democracy, says the Prime Minister. Farm reforms are in the best interest of farmers, asserts Agriculture Minister. National COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 94.74%. 51% polling recorded in fifth phase of District Development Council elections in Jammu and Kashmir. And India and Nepal decide to open flights under bilateral bubble arrangement. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki dori for social distancing, and focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today laid the foundation stone of the new parliament building at Sansad Marg in Parliament Complex. Various religious leaders performed Sarva Dharma Prarthana at the foundation stone laying ceremony. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Modi said that the new parliament building will be the place to fulfill the aspirations of the 21st century India. He said that the new building will witness the creation of a self-reliant India. Mr. Modi termed the foundation stone laying ceremony as a milestone in India's democratic history. He said the new parliament house is a building by the Indians which is vibrant with the idea of Indianness. भारत के संसद भवन के निर्माण का शुभारंभ हमारी लोकतांत्रिक परंपराओं के सबसे अहम पड़ाव में से एक है। हम भारत के लोग मिलकर अपनी संसद के इस नए भवन को बनाएंगे इससे सुंदर क्या होगा इससे पवित्र क्या होगा जब भारत अपनी आजादी के 75 वर्ष का पर्व मनाए तो उस पर्व की साक्षात प्रेरणा हमारी संसद की नई इमारत बने The Prime Minister said that he will never forget the moment when he walked into the Parliament for the first time in 2014 when he bowed down at the steps of the Parliament with respect. He said the new building will increase the efficiency of the parliamentarians as it houses many modern amenities. He said India's democracy is a system developed through centuries of experience. भारत में लोकतंत्र एक संस्कार है भारत के लिए लोकतंत्र जीवन मूल्य है जीवन पद्धति है राष्ट्र जीवन की आत्मा है भारत का लोकतंत्र सदियों के अनुभव से विकसित हुई व्यवस्था है भारत के लिए लोकतंत्र में जीवन मंत्र भी है जीवन तत्व भी है और साथ ही व्यवस्था का तंत्र भी है The Prime Minister said democracy in India has always been a means of resolving differences along with governance He said different views and different perspectives always empower a vibrant democracy. Mr. Modi said policies and politics may vary, but we are for the service of public and there should be no differences in this ultimate goal. He said we always have to remember that every delegate who reaches parliament is accountable and this accountability is also towards the public and to the constitution. Hame hamesha yaad rakhna hai ki sansad pahuncha har pratinidhi jawab de hai. ये जवाबदेही जनता के प्रति भी है और संविधान के प्रति भी है हमारा हर फैसला राष्ट्र प्रथम नेशन फर्स्ट इसकी भावना से ही होना चाहिए हमारे हर फैसले में राष्ट्र हित सर्वोपरि रहना चाहिए राष्ट्रीय संकल्पों की सिद्धि के लिए हम एक स्वर में एक आवाज में खड़े हो ये बहुत जरूरी है The Prime Minister urged the people to take the pledge to keep India first, to worship only the progress of India and the development of India. Every decision should increase the strength of the country and that the country's interest is paramount. He asked everyone to take the pledge that there will be no greater interest for them than the national interest. 
He asked people to pledge that their concern for the country will be more than their own personal concerns and nothing will be more important to them than the unity and integrity of the country. Addressing the gathering, Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla said that the current building did not have the scope for further structural expansion which necessitated construction of a new parliament building. He said this will help in successfully discharging the constitutional duties in the years to come. Deputy Chairman Rajya Sabha Harivansh Narayan Singh, Home Minister Amit Shah, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi, Housing and Urban Affairs Minister Hardeep Singh Puri and several other Union Cabinet Ministers, Ministers of State and Members of Parliament were also present on the occasion. Our correspondent reports that the proposal for the new Parliament building was made by Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu and Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla during the proceedings of Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha on 5th August last year. The new Parliament building will be modern, state-of-the-art and energy efficient with highly non-obtrusive security facilities to be built as a triangular-shaped building adjacent to the present Parliament. Lok Sabha will be three times of the existing size and Rajya Sabha will be substantially bigger. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has said that today is a historic day in the annals of India's parliamentary democracy. In a series of tweets, Mr. Naidu said he is extremely glad that foundation of a new parliament building is being laid. He said it will be an iconic symbol of both our ancient ethos and 21st century aspirations. The Vice President hoped that the new Parliament building will be the venue to deepen the democratic roots and build upon the ancient Indian tradition of debate and dialogue. The fifth phase of DDC polls concluded smoothly across the Jammu and Kashmir Union territory with a turnout of over 51%. Addressing a press conference in Jammu this evening, State Election Commissioner K.K. Sharma said that in Jammu, voting percent was 66.67% and in Kashmir, 33.57% voting was recorded. More from our correspondent. Which district topped the list with impressive voter turnout of 71.62% followed by Doda district with 70.95%. In Kashmir Valley, Bandipura district recorded highest polling at 56.4% followed by Kupwara district at 52.35% in the fifth phase of elections. With today's polling, the fate of 299 candidates has been sealed in the ballot boxes. The first ever district relevant council polls are being held in JNK Union Territory for in eight phases. The last and eighth phase will be held on December 19 while the counting of votes will be taken up on December 22. R.K. Raina, A.R. News, Jammu. In Kerala, high polling was reported today in the second phase of local body elections. Here is more from our Thiruvananthapuram correspondent. Overall, 76% of voting was reported in the five districts as per State Election Commission at 6.30 p.m. The second phase of local polls had recorded more polling than the first phase. Kottayam district recorded 73.72% polling, Ernamulam 76.74%, Trishur 74.58%, Palakkad 77.53% and Vainar recorded the highest voters turnout of 79.22%. Polling has been peaceful in all the five districts. The third phase of election will be held in December 14th and the counting is scheduled on 16th of this month. Mayusha for AI News from Tiruvannathapuram. In Assam, voting for the second and final phase of Bodoland Territorial Council polls has concluded in Chirang and Kokrajar districts amid tight security. 69% polling was recorded when reports last came in. 111 candidates are in the fray in this phase. The first phase of voting was held on the 7th of this month. Counting of votes will take place on Saturday. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lays foundation stone of new parliament building in New Delhi. Says the new building will be the place to fulfill aspirations of India in 21st century. National interest is supreme. Different views and different perspectives empower a vibrant democracy, says the Prime Minister. Farm reforms are in the best interest of farmers, asserts Agriculture Minister. National COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 94.74%. 51% polling recorded in the fifth phase of District Development Council elections in Jammu and Kashmir. And India and Nepal decide to open flights under bilateral bubble arrangement. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. To get accurate, reliable and wide coverage of news, tune in to AIR News 24-7 and FM Gold and listen to the major bulletins at 8.30 a.m., 2 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. in English 
and 8 a.m. to 30 p.m. and 8 p.m. in Hindi of half an hour each. The government has said the farm reforms have been brought forth, keeping in mind the best interests of the farmers. Addressing the media in New Delhi today, Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar said the government wanted to liberate the farmers from the shackles of mandis so that they could sell their produce anywhere to anyone at their own price, outside the purview of mandis. He said the government expressed that it is ready for open-minded discussions and provisions they have objections against. He said the center tried to explain to the farmers that laws do not affect APMCs or MSP. He said the center's proposals to allay concerns over MSP and APMCs, but farmers' leaders rejected those. हम लोगों की लगातार पहले भी कोशिश रही है और अभी भी मैं किसान भाइयों और बहनों को आग्रह करना चाहता हूं कि आप सब ने चर्चा के दौरान जो प्रश्न उठाए थे उन प्रश्नों का समाधान करने के लिए लिखित प्रस्ताव भारत सरकार ने आपके समक्ष भेजा है आप उन प्रस्ताव पर विचार करें और आपकी तरफ से जब भी चर्चा की स्थिति के लिए कहा जाएगा भारत सरकार एकदम चर्चा के लिए तैयार रहेगी The minister said center has clarified that it has the right to make laws on trade and explained that APMC and MSP are not affected by it Mr. Tomer reassured that the land of farmers will not be occupied by industrialists. He pointed out that contract farming has been going on for long in Gujarat, Maharashtra, Haryana, Punjab, Karnataka, but there has never been such an experience. कानून में ये प्रावधान किया गया है कि इस कानून के अंतर्गत जो एग्रीमेंट होगा वो प्रोसेसर और किसान की फसल के बीच में ही होगा किसान की भूमि से संबंधित कोई लीज पट्टा करार ऐसा कुछ भी इसमें हो नहीं सकता दूसरा हम लोगों ने ये भी कहा था कि अगर दोनों लोग करार करते हैं और फसल का प्रकार ऐसा है कि किसी भी प्रकार की अधोसंरचना खेत पर खड़ी करने की नौबत आती है तो ऐसी स्थिति में जब करार समाप्त होगा तो जो प्रोसेसर है अपनी संरचना को वहां से उठा के ले जाएगा और अगर वो तोड़ के नहीं ले जाता है तो उसका स्वामी जो है वो कृषक ही होगा एड्रेसिंग द मीडिया कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री मिनिस्टर पीयूष गोयल सेड दैट द मंडी सिस्टम रिमेन्स एज इट इज we were ready to ensure that the private mandis are also tagged at the same level as apmc so that the level playing field which they were concerned about can be ensured we were willing to give written assurance that msp will continue in its present form with 31522 new covid-19 infections in 24 hours india's total cases reached 97 67372 The health ministry said 412 people lost their lives in the last 24 hours. With this the death toll has gone up to 1,41,772. The total active cases are now at 3,72,293. The total discharge cases reached 92,53,306. In the last 24 hours 37,725 people were discharged. The recovery rate has reached 94.74%. India has crossed yet another landmark milestone in the fight against the global pandemic. The cumulative COVID-19 testing has crossed 15 crore mark today. During the last 24 hours, more than 922,000 samples were tested. The Union Health Ministry said that 1 crore COVID tests were conducted in the last 10 days. India's present active case load of 3,72,293 consists of just 3.81% of India's total positive cases. The News Services Division of All India Radio brings you glimpses of the year that was in our special series Year Ender 2020. COVID-19 pandemic has been the biggest story of the year and India has seen a valiant fight against the disease under the dynamic leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Vaccine development has been a major challenge. After an all party meeting last Friday, the Prime Minister announced that a COVID vaccine is expected in the country in the next few weeks. He said the world is looking at India for an affordable and effective vaccine.
दुनिया की नजर कम कीमत वाली सबसे सुरक्षित वैक्सीन पर है और इस वजह से स्वाभाविक है पूरी दुनिया की नजर भारत पर भी है अहमदाबाद पुणे और हैदराबाद जाकर मैंने ये भी देखा है कि वैक्सीन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग को लेकर देश की तैयारियां कैसी हैं भारत की अपनी तीन अलग अलग वैक्सीन का ट्रायल अलग अलग चरणों में एक्सपर्ट्स ये मानकर चल रहे हैं कि अब कोरोना की वैक्सीन के लिए बहुत ज्यादा इंतजार नहीं करना पड़ेगा The science-based approach and constant monitoring has made India stand at the forefront in terms of development of COVID vaccines. Three vaccines are now just awaiting for their emergency usage approval. Talking to AIR News, Principal Scientific Advisor to the Central Government, Professor K. Vijay Raghavan, said that the country is reaping the benefits of its investment and belief in foundational science, which in real terms has helped India sail through the times of a pandemic. India has always been, for quite some time that is, a major producer of vaccines for the world. Two out of three vaccines in the childhood immunization programs globally are made in India. But during this pandemic, India has, in addition, done extraordinarily well in becoming a developer of vaccines and new vaccines from here. And this is a great example of how investment in foundational science, basic science, pays off in an emergency. Here's a report from a correspondent who takes a look at India's journey towards search of a viable and effective COVID vaccine. India is not only leading the world in research of vaccines but will also be crucial for the world's COVID vaccination program. With India being the world's largest vaccine manufacturer and supplier, huge number of countries largely depend on it for their vaccination drives. India is currently awaiting a nod from the drug regulator for emergency usage of three vaccines out of which two are developed in the country. Covaxin and indigenous COVID vaccine developed by Bharat Biotech is currently undergoing third and the last phase of human clinical trials. Another vaccine developed in the country by Zydus Cadilla is in their penultimate phase of trials. Serum Institute in Pune has undertaken manufacturing of Covishield, the Oxford vaccine in the country, which is also in its last phase of trials. Apart from these three vaccines, Sputnik V developed in Russia is also under its third phase clinical trials by Dr. Reddy's lab. Leading scientists have collective view that looking at the vast number of vaccines needed in the country and worldwide, countries will be resorting to usage of multiple multiple vaccines at the same time. Head of missions of over 60 countries visited Genome Valley in Hyderabad yesterday where they witnessed development of vaccines in the Indian facilities at Bharat Biotech and Biological E Limited. India is committed to partner with interested countries in vaccine-related efforts for the service of humanity, with the states almost finishing up with their priority lists of people who would be vaccinated first, immunization of nearly 1 crore healthcare workers and 2 crore frontline workers in the country would soon mark the beginning of the end for the pandemic. For AIR News, Anand Chaturvedi, Delhi. The Pradhan Mantri Matra Vandana Yojana is a flagship scheme introduced by the Narendra Modi government in 2017. More than one crore beneficiaries have received cash benefits directly into their accounts in the last three years. The scheme has worked wonders even during the lockdown, bringing in much respite for new parents. Here is a report from a Mumbai correspondent. Under the Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana scheme, cash benefits are provided to pregnant women directly in their bank accounts to meet enhanced nutritional requirements and to partially compensate for wage loss. The scheme was implemented unhindered even during the coronavirus-induced lockdown and so far, more than 30,000 women have received maternity benefits worth 12 crore, 25 lakh and 41,000 rupees under the scheme in Maharashtra's Usmanabad district. Here is what two of the beneficiaries had to say about the scheme. With inputs from Usmanabad PTC Devidas Fatak, this is Nisha Rani for AIR News, Mumbai. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has paid homage to the martyrs of the Yassam movement on Swahid Devas. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said their passion towards the progress of Assam and empowerment of the state's citizens continues to inspire everyone. 
Union Minister for Minority Affairs, Mukhtar Abbas Naqvi, has announced that the last date for submission of application forms for Hajj 2021 has been extended up to 10th January 2021. Addressing a press conference in Mumbai today, Mr. Naqvi said a month-long extension is being given considering the restrictions included with regard to age, health and fitness, besides others, in view of the coronavirus pandemic. Hajj 2021 is scheduled for June to July 2021 and the minister clarified that all the necessary national international guidelines related to the coronavirus pandemic will be followed strictly. Home Minister Amit Shah has condemned the attack on BGP President J.P. Nadda's convoy in West Bengal, saying that the centre is taking this incident very seriously. In a series of tweets, Mr. Shah said, the government will have to answer to the peace-loving people of West Bengal for the sponsored violence. He alleged that West Bengal has entered into an era of anarchy and darkness under the TMC rule. BGP President J.P. Nadda's convoy was allegedly attacked with stones and bricks while on its way to Diamond Harbour in Kolkata today. Several BJP leaders, including National General Secretary Kailash Vijayvargya, were injured when stones were pelted at their vehicles. Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari today inaugurated the three-lane, 1.5-kilometer-long Koilwar Bridge over Son River in Bihar through video conferencing. A sum of 266 crore rupees has been spent on the bridge. The bridge is a main road for transport between Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today virtually attended the 10th anniversary of the founding of the ASEAN Defence Ministers Meeting Plus, ADMM Plus. In his address, Mr. Singh said, Cyber security and military medicine are the main challenges before the government. He said another notable step has been the adoption of the concept paper on expanding ASEAN direct communication infrastructure to the plus countries. Mr. Singh said there is also need to continue the efforts to address the threats to civilization. We also need to continue our efforts to address the threats of bioterrorism, translational trafficking and the pandemic diseases. Here I would like to reiterate the importance of the support of the military establishment of our respective countries to their civilian law enforcement counterparts. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman reviewed the situation about payment to the MSMEs and expressed satisfaction and appreciation on the work done by the Ministry of MSME. As part of Prime Minister's vision, the Finance Minister had announced Atmanirbhar Bharat package in May this year. It was stated that the MSME dues should be paid in 45 days. Since the month of May, regular follow-up and concerted efforts have been made by the government, particularly by the MSME Ministry for payment of these dues. Particular focus was placed on central public sector enterprises and the central government agencies for payment of dues to MSMEs. As a result, over 21,000 crore rupees of MSME dues have been paid since May by the central government agencies and CPSEs. Just within a year of operationalizing NEFT 24-7, the Reserve Bank has announced that the real-time growth settlement system or the RTGS facility will now be available for round-the-clock transactions with effect from 12.30 a.m. on Monday. In a statement, the RBI has informed that this facility will provide extended flexibility to businesses for effecting payments. It added that the system can also be leveraged to enhance operations of Indian financial markets and cross-border payments. The South Western Railways Division has started unhindered services of timetabled parcel trains for the transportation of essential commodities and other goods across the country. Our Bengaluru correspondent reports that the South Western Railways already started timetabled parcel trains in April this year during the pandemic. The railways has transformed itself as an alternative to the road transportation of essential goods. The Southwestern Railways started timetabled parcel trains in April this year. Till November, the division had run 309 parcel trains carrying 54,642.20 tons of parcels to different parts of the country, which included medicines. These trains have transported perishables and fruits, iced fish and meat, motorcycles and cars, spices and even eggs. The general manager of the division, A.K. Singh, has informed that 76% of the rakes were utilized and demand for parcel cargo express trains is consistently increasing. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. Environment Minister Prakash Javlekar has urged all agencies for strict compliance of construction and demolition waste management rules and effective dust management in the national capital. 
Mr. Javlikar said the Central Pollution Control Board has issued a directive to Delhi State Industrial Development Corporation, Delhi Jal Board, Delhi State PWD, DDA, CPWD, DMRC, NHAI and MTNL for strict compliance of regulations on mitigation of dust emanating from construction and demolition activities in Delhi NCR. All must do ensure that dust doesn't go into air and dust management is better. Like what we see in metro. In metro, there is tunneling every day going on, but there is no trace of dust anywhere in the city or even in the dumping yard. So this is the way dust should be managed. So we have issued today, notice I was already served, now we have issued reminder that all should follow and comply. India and Nepal have decided to open flights under a bilateral bubble arrangement as India has done with several countries. Sosa said India had proposed this to Nepal some time back and Nepal has cleared it now after Foreign Secretary Harshwardhan Shringla highlighted the importance of people-to-people -people connectivity during recent visit. The arrangement is being started with Indians, Nepalese, OCI, PIO card holders of all nationalities and all valid India visa holders. Initially, there will be one flight daily from each side between Delhi and Kathmandu. A virtual summit will be held between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President of Uzbekistan Shavkat Mirziyoyev tomorrow. This will be the first bilateral virtual summit meeting between India and the Central Asian country. The Prime Minister has greeted the people of Israel and Jewish people all over the world on Hanukkah festival. In a tweet, Mr. Modi hoped the festival brings peace and light in the lives and kindles more warmth to the relationship between people. High Commissioner of India to Bangladesh, Vikram Durai Swami, paid a courtesy call on the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Ms. Sheikh Hasina, at her official residence, Jonabhavan, in Dhaka today. The official news agency, BSS, reports that during the meeting, Mr. Durai Swami expressed India's willingness to contribute in enhancing the service delivery capacity of Bangladeshi professionals for the COVID-19 vaccine. China announced today it would revoke visa exemption treatment for U.S. diplomatic passport holders paying temporary visits to Hong Kong and Macau after the United States imposed financial sanctions and a travel ban on more than a dozen Chinese officials. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying told a press briefing in Beijing that China has decided to impose reciprocal sanctions against some U.S. officials, members of Congress, personnel at non-governmental organizations and their family members over their egregious behavior on Hong Kong. Key domestic indices today snapped their record-setting rally logging modest losses. Amid negative Asian queues, the BSE Sensex declined 144 points to settle at 45,960. The NSE Nifty 50 index also fell 51 points to settle at 13,478. Now, let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital will have rain or thunder showers towards evening or night, with temperatures varying between 13 and 26 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky, and the temperature will vary between 24 and 34 degrees Celsius. Chennai is likely to witness a partly cloudy sky, and temperature will hover between 22 and 30 degrees Celsius. Kolkata is likely to have fog in the morning, and a mainly clear sky later, and temperature will vary between 17 and 27 degrees. On to the north, Jammu will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain and the temperature will hover between 12 and 20 degrees Celsius. Srinagar is likely to witness a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Temperature will hover between 4 degrees and 6 degrees Celsius. In Leh, there will be a partly cloudy sky becoming generally cloudy towards afternoon or evening or night and the temperature will vary between minus 7 and 6 degrees Celsius. Gilgit will have moderate snow with temperature varying between minus 3 and 10 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will witness a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain and temperature will vary between 7 and 16 degrees Celsius. In Dehradun, the temperature will hover between 11 and 26 degrees Celsius. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lays foundation stone of new parliament building in New Delhi says the new building will be the place to fulfill aspirations of India in 21st century. National interest is supreme, different views and different perspectives empower a vibrant democracy, says the Prime Minister. Farm reforms are in the best interest of farmers, asserts Agriculture Minister. National COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 94.74%. 
51% polling recorded in fifth phase of district development council elections in Jammu and Kashmir and India and Nepal decide to open flights under bilateral bubble arrangement. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website newsonair.com and newsonair app. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.